I call myself Isabel was born out of this sheer necessity of talking, expressing myself and communicating. At the time when I wrote it, I wrote it because I was in a desperate situation. I thought I was losing my mind. I was working at a factory and in that factory, you know, you, nobody spoke Spanish, first of all. Everyone was uh, speaking different languages. I, I felt like I was in a foreign film, but without subtitles. And one day I just got so desperate, so, um, you know, in that dark place where you can't even hear your own name because nobody pronounces it the way you do or the way your mother did or your grandmother did. And I started to realize that I, I was very close to, to losing my mind in, in, in a way that I had never experienced before. I realized that I was talking to myself. That's why I call myself Isabel, is a play on words. It's not just that uh, my name is Isabel, or in Spanish, that's the, the literal translation, me llamo Isabel. It was that I actually was talking to myself when I worked in the factory, when I worked, you know, at a, at a coffee shop, or if I was walking on the street at a restaurant, anywhere I went, I was like, Isabel, don't forget to turn off the lights, Isabel, do this. When I decided to write this play, it wasn't because I was writing a play, I was just writing a letter. And in this letter um, that I was writing to my mother, I was trying to explain at first why I wanted to go home. And then it changed from that to, you know, telling my own stories and making some, some up. It's not just, it's not completely my story, but it is about a woman who, by loneliness, it starts to lose a grasp with the reality. And I think that's why when, when we look back 25 years ago, it was really relevant to my life. Uh, 25 years later, I believe it's relevant to reality of today. And so many people that are struggling with loneliness, especially after the pandemic. So many people are struggling with identity with belonging and and I think we live in a world where sadly after 25 years this same theme resonates uh, so much with people. This play opened a lot of doors for me. Um, in 2001 I was so happy to be invited to participate of Writer's Block it was part of theater and companies, um, it, it, this sort of uh, in-house group of playwrights that would get together, and I never considered myself a playwright at all. But um, theater and company at the time was the professional company in Kitchener that had the theater, had the resources, and had the opportunities to, to create these spaces. And, uh, I was lucky that I was able to participate and then have my play shown three days in Spanish and English. I was directed by Mike Peng, a really great actor and director. And, and then that, because of the attention that that play got at that time, I started to feel the confidence to open, you know, myself. I'm so excited because Helen Basson is a great actor. And I saw her at a different play that um, it was part of Flash Ink Productions, uh, Asphalt Junk, called Shorts. And uh, I thought she's perfect for this, for this show. And I have been trying to get her to come on board, mostly because the, the time wasn't right. And now that she's doing it, I am so confident that she's gonna be a great Isabel. Lots of people that said that they were there for the first time 25 years ago. And so I would like to invite those people to come again and see the sort of the, the, new, the new edition of this play. But also I would like to invite all the friends that have gone through similar situations and, and 
enjoy theater and enjoy storytelling, uh, just come. I think this play will, you know, bring you through the different roller coaster of emotions, which is the immigration story, but told by this innocent and charismatic but yet complex character.